in a nutshell, I could care less if I am ever cheated on. Because I have dealt with the fact that it's always a possibility. You know, anyone can cheat. Anyone. Any man, any woman, anybody can do it. No one is free from that. And so it's just something that can happen. And me getting used to that and realizing that it can happen, it's like I've dealt with the worst case scenario. That if it does. And the thing with that is if it does, I still have my worth. I still know what I'm worth. I know that I can pick up and move on. And I know that I'll be all right. And I know that that person then loses their value to me. They're no longer valuable to me because they have hurt me. They're no, they're no longer valuable to me because they have cheated on me and didn't give a damn about me. And so it's like, you lose your worth to me. But I still have my worth. In the, back in the day, when I was dating my exes, it was harder for me to have that self-worth and security in myself because I knew I wasn't going to leave. And when you know that you're afraid of them abandoning you, you're afraid of being left alone, you're afraid of being alone, you're afraid of ending a relationship, you're going to have a lot more anxiety around them possibly cheating on you. And the reason being is because you know that if that happens, you're not going to leave and now you have to stay and tolerate that hurt. Excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? Hey girlfriend, it's your girl, mindset and intuitive coach, Kendall D, back with the Hey Girlfriend podcast. So today y'all, we're going to be talking about being cheated on, basically, and what to do if you've been cheated on, if you're anxious now about being cheated on again, if you're in a relatively healthy relationship yet you're still anxious about being cheated on just being cheated on period all about it because i've been cheated on multiple times by the same person in my past two relationships like a lot of infidelity and i'm able to still move on i was able to still move on and find myself in a healthy relationship with a healthy partner and not even have that fear anymore. So I'm going to tell you how I don't have that fear anymore. Because I am not. I can't sit here and be like, yeah, don't be afraid of being cheated on. And if I've never really experienced it, baby, I've experienced it. So I get it. So I have a list that I'm going to get into and give my details on. Now, this is a list that I found on Bustle, Bustle.com. So shout out to them. And they, and they got this list from Redditors. So the list is very good. And it's actually along the lines of what I was going to be speaking on. And so what I've decided to do is use their list. But put my own Kindle D spin to it so that you get it. And it comes to you like you're used to me delivering it. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to give you a little history on myself. So that you understand where I'm coming from. So that you can relate. <laughs> basically because that's that's what i'm all about you know this is this is i've been that girl relatable content so as y'all know <laughs> if you've read my book toxic x chronicles john and you're watching my series on youtube toxic which is um basically about that book but i'm just decided to bring it to youtube and you all know that i'm working on toxic x chronicles sebastian about my second toxic relationship so like those two times that I know of, those two relationships, I mean, I was cheated on like a lot. And it really weighed heavy on me because I was always insecure with them. And I thought it was because I was an insecure person, but it was really now that I'm looking back, realizing that the people, the guys that I was with were making me insecure. And the whole time I thought it was just something with me. I kind of figured it was them too, but I just, I don't know. I don't know how to to, to put it into words, but I just know it wasn't all me. Because they like to try to say, you know, back then I used to look at stuff on Facebook or read articles and or hear people say, a man can't make you insecure. A man can't make you have low self-esteem. Um, yes, the fuck he can. Because, <laughs> so 
that's you know what that's where the confusion came in at the confusion for me came in at where i was trying to like understand like why am i feeling this way why am i so in, why am i so insecure if a man ain't supposed to make me that way i'm just insecure on my own no it was definitely that definitely played a part in it and so in those relationships i was cheated on a lot and it was almost like i expected it and I, and when i say i expected it, it's because I knew the type of guys that I was with. I knew before getting with them. I knew what type of lifestyle they lived. I knew about their past. And and I knew it was a chance that they probably weren't going to be faithful and honest to me. But I wanted to try anyway. Because I had this thing to where I wanted to like date the guys that, you know, had a hurtful past. Or the guys that had heartbreak or... The guys that had trust issues or the guys that have, that didn't trust love or were afraid of love but wanted it. You know, the guys with all the hidden trauma that tried to put on this front like they didn't have trauma but did. Those type of guys. Basically, I went for guys like that. And as because I wanted to be so greatly appreciated. I wanted to show them like, you know, hey, love is real. I'm a good girl. You know, come get with me. i show you differently. You know, I wanted to be a savior, basically. Codependency, basically. And so, I found myself in relationships like that, being cheated on all the time. I was always checking their phones, always meeting up, trying to figure out where they at, stalking them, going drive-by in their house. Um, you name it, I did it. Checking voicemails. I would spoof my number, too. I don't know if y'all know what that is, but spoofing is where you basically use this, it's like this, Back then it was on a the computer. It may be an app for it now. But you can get on this website. You basically put the number you want to show up on their caller ID. But you're calling from your number. But they don't know it. So I knew the girls that were cheating on me numbers. The side chicks. Or I was probably the side chick. But the other chicks numbers. I had their numbers. Because I would go to their phones and find it and see what they're talking to. And so I would take their number. Put it in a spoofing um, on the computer. And called them. To, I wanted to see how they would answer the phone. If they were answer saying the name. Or they were answer saying like, hey, what's up, babe? Or, hey, you know, I'm with you. One time I did it with an ex. And they were with each other right then. Yeah. And and she was, and I remember him saying, you calling me? She's like, no, I'm right here. I ain't My phone in my hand, I ain't calling you. And he was like, your number popped up on my phone. I heard him hung up. I found out what I needed to know. But it's like back then, y'all. When you realize you're doing all of that and you're still staying with them. So what is the point? Like you're doing all of that trying to find out they're cheating on you. You're trying to figure it out. Trying to catch them in the lie. And then you end up staying every time. And so it's like, what is the point? So after going through all of that, I'm at this space now that I'm going to tell you how I got to. I'm at this space. I'm in a healthy relationship. Cheating is the last thing I'm worried about. Don't really care if it happens and I'll tell you why and all that we're going to get into these steps because I just want you to just get a glimpse of how I was so you can see that the woman I am now and that it's possible it's possible to come to go from being insecure being afraid of being cheated on being anxious and to go from being very secure and securely attached to who you date it's very possible I did it so that was my point of sharing that but a lot of y'all know my history but some of y'all may be new watchers so there we go. That's just it in a nutshell. And you want to learn more? Breed Toxic X Chronicles John. This book right there. And I also am doing the series Toxic. Check it out on my YouTube channel. So let's get into this list. This is a very good list. Like I said, I'm going to put my own spin on it. But I'm going to go through the list and give you my thoughts on it. And help you to go from anxious to secure and not be afraid of being cheated on. Even if you were cheated on a lot in the past. Because, yeah. Let's, let me get into it. Okay. <laughs> number one. So, number one is, if he's going to cheat, he's going to cheat. There's nothing you can do about it, basically. If he's going to do it, there's nothing you can do to stop it. Just, you have to get real with yourself on that. Because, I mean... You can do all the hoovering in the world, all the, you know, checking up on them, going through the phone. Um, you can do all of that. 
And then cheaters are going to cheat if they want to. There's nothing you can do about it. And so once you once you get to that point of realizing that you have no way, no way to stop that, you kind of will calm down in it. Maybe. Because the thing is, you have to realize that when someone cheats, it says more about who they are as a person than it does about you. And I think what happens sometimes is that you're afraid of being cheated on and you're anxious about it because of what you think, what it may say about you. You're thinking it may make you feel that you're unworthy, then, that you're not doing enough, you're not pleasing them enough, you're not, you know, you'll think all these things. And so maybe you're trying to prevent it. Or maybe you're anxious that they're going to leave you. Or deep down you're, you know, you're anxious about being abandoned. Whatever it is, there's some anxiousness deep down in you. And so you're trying to prevent it. Or you're trying to, some kind of way, look for them to cheat them because it some kind of way soothes you. You know, you're looking for the bad stuff to say, ha, I knew it. You know, you're cheating on me. But that's not going to do anything. You looking for it is not going to stop them. And so if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You can't stop it. And so that's the number one thing is to like pretty much get in your head. Get that in your head. Because something I want to point out that they said in this article that I thought was really, really good. It says, our imagination is a third party in our relationship all the time. And yes, <laughs> that is so true. Even in a good or a healthy relationship, your imagination can get the best of you in any relationship. Like you can, you can be sitting there and they're not a wit or with you around you. And your mind can begin to wonder about some of the, some of the things that they could be possibly doing, making up things that are not even probably true. You don't know. And so I find that worrying about that is not going to help any because it just makes me feel worse. And so, recognizing that, that you can't do anything about it, and that it just makes you feel worse, you either will stay with them and give them the benefit of the doubt, or you either would leave and realize that I don't feel safe here. You have a choice, basically. But sitting there in the middle somewhere where you're just constantly afraid and constantly checking, that's just making your life hell and making their life hell. You don't need that. Okay? Okay. Let's get into number two. Number two, it says, give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay. I got a lot to say on this, um, of what I'm going to say on my own thing. Because give them the benefit of the doubt, this is more powerful if you're in a healthy relationship. If you know, if you know <laughs> that you are in a not so good relationship or you're in a relationship where someone has cheated on you in the past or there's been a lot of evidence showing that it is, if you know that you can't give the benefit of the doubt, then that is separate. This is if you're in a healthy relationship and nothing has happened. Everything's been great so far. Communication's been great. Everything is great. Everything is decent. Everything is good. They haven't hurt you. So, what I've learned to do is you have to give them the benefit of the doubt and give them that trust. Because they're trusting you like you're going to trust them. Because think about it. Well, how I thought about it. It's like, I go out. I do my thing. When I'm away from him. You know, I will want him to, I hope that he trusts me. Because trust just feels better. And also... In order for you to be able to give someone the benefit of the doubt and to feel like you can trust them, you have to get with a trustworthy partner. You have to get with someone that is actually better quality than what you've dated in the past, maybe. That kind of goes into my number three as well. This is a little off of the list, but I don't, I'm not going exactly with the list. I'm just using it as a guide. But yes, the number two and number three is to give the benefit of the doubt. And number three is make sure you date someone you can just fucking trust. So... Before you can even begin to give someone the benefit of the doubt and to self-soothe yourself when you're not around them, you have to first realize that you're doing number three, which you have picked a trustworthy partner. And you have to trust that you've picked someone that you can trust. And what I mean by that is just date better quality men. That's what I had to start with. And I started with, once I dated better quality men, 
I didn't have so much of that fear. Like I don't have that fear with my husband now because I trust that I did a good job picking him. I just trust him overall as well. And so when you start off right, it can be healthy throughout. And you also have to make sure that you're picking someone that lives life the way that you are okay with. Someone that someone that you feel safe with. And what I mean by that is if you know that you do not like a guy to flirt with other women online, um, whether it's harmless or not, whether they're actually cheating or not, but if you know that you don't like them to be super active with other women online, talking to other women online, um, leaving comments and flirting and all that stuff, even though it may quote unquote be harmless, if you know that that's not something that you want and that you like and that you know you can't trust, don't date them. Don't be with someone like that. You have to see how they do and how they act. And you also have to come in with your boundaries and your standards. And so once you raise your standards and raise your boundaries and raise what you're not going to settle for, and you know that you want someone safe, not someone that just looks good to the eye or someone that just talks good, you know, you're doing away with that, with that shit. You know, you're not getting, you're not falling in lust with someone and then trying to make a relationship out of it. You're actually being more grounded in your dating. And so when you're being more grounded in your dating, that means you're doing a better job at picking someone that you want to share your life with. And so with me just really focusing on that component and picking and choosing a better, good partner, that's what did it for me. That's how I'm able to trust him. That's how I'm able to give him the benefit of the doubt. That's how I'm able to, you know, feel safe in the relationship and not have that worry. And... And when it comes to you doing this part, like picking someone you can trust and giving the benefit of the doubt, you're going to have to probably do a lot of work on yourself first as well. Because, I ain't going to lie, like back in the day when I was dating my exes and when I picked them, I don't feel like it was my highest self doing the picking, if you will. I feel like it was maybe my wounded inner child or even my wounded inner teenager doing the picking. And what I mean by that is that I was dating solely for someone to just like me and choose me and pick me. Someone that was attractive and someone that just wanted to be with me. And I thought that I can make do with the rest. And I'm not to mention I was also picking guys that I felt had a little trauma or felt just needed a little love. And I was trying to like, quote unquote, like nurse them back to health, so to speak. So I was picking guys like that. And it's like picking guys like that because my standards were so low and I was just didn't know what I was doing. Didn't know really what love was about. I found myself anticipating them cheating because I just expected it to happen. You know, I didn't expect much out of them. And not to mention, I also understood it quote unquote a little too much because I'm like okay I know they just have some trust issues and it may be a little cheating because they have difficulty trusting love and trusting me you know I made so many damn excuses for them and so in making all those excuses for them it was like giving them the the right away to hurt me and I just took it because I expected it from them but now that I'm different healed Dating, and I dated with my higher self and the husband that I'm with now, my man that I'm with now, I speak more out of him because I picked better, I chose better, and I'm better. So I speak more out of me, I speak more out of him. And so with that being said, that's how I'm able to give the benefit of the doubt. Does that make sense? And if let's say if you are trying to you're in a relationship and it's generally healthy but you're still anxious and worried about them cheating on you this can apply to you as well because it's like more than likely you're not able to get them the benefit of the doubt because of some other things you have going on within you let's move on into number four number four is realize your worth 
this one was really big for me and it can be a really big thing for you as well and it really changed the whole game for me so realizing my worth I know it sounds so cliche but what it is is that in a nutshell I could care less if I am ever cheated on because I have dealt with the fact that it's always a possibility you know anyone can cheat anyone any man any woman anybody can do it no one is free from that and so it's just something that can happen and me getting used to that and realizing that it can happen it's like I've dealt with the worst case scenario that if it does and the thing with that is if it does I still have my worth I still know what I'm worth I know that I can pick up and move on and I know that I'd be all right. And I know that that person then loses their value to me. They're no longer valuable to me because they have hurt me. They're no, they're no longer valuable to me because they have cheated on me and didn't give a damn about me. And so it's like, you lose your worth to me. But I still have my worth for me. You get what I'm saying? And so in realizing that, that's how you're able to navigate a relationship because you have the security in yourself like of course you do have to pick a good partner a decent partner yes of course someone that you can trust but having that self-trust in yourself just is like tops the cake having that inner security within yourself knowing that you'll be all right because in the back in the day when i was dating my exes it was harder for me to have that self-worth and security in myself because I knew I wasn't going to leave. And when you know that you're afraid of them abandoning you, you're afraid of being left alone, you're afraid of being alone, you're afraid of ending a relationship, you're going to have a lot more anxiety around them possibly cheating on you. And the reason being is because you know that if that happens, you're not going to leave and now you have to stay and tolerate that hurt. And you know that there's not much that you be able to do about it, but cry about it and beg and plead to them. And then you stay. And so I found that a lot of my anxiety in my past relationships came from that. Knowing that I was not going to be able to leave and knowing that I, even though I was snooping, trying to figure it out and catch them in a lie, knowing deep down that I'm not going anywhere. And I think almost like they knew that as well. And that's a lot, of, a lot of reasons why they probably kept doing it. Because it's like, I would figure it out, find it out. Maybe go a day or two without talking to them. They come back around and apologize. And it was back to, like, nothing happened for a little bit. Then it was back to the same thing. Me never trusting them. Me finding another lie. Me finding them, catching them up again and again. Me staying. And so when you have that anxiety or that insecurity, or you don't know your worth, you are going to have a harder time being in any relationship because the cheating factor is always going to be in the back of your head, and you know that there's nothing you can do about it if they do that to you. You know that you're not going to walk away, and that you're going to stay and deal with it. And so, once you get in your mind and in your head, and once you reach a level in your life and you reach certain and you you know increase your standards increase your self-esteem and build it and all this took time for me you know i really feel like maybe being in those bad relationships kind of pushed me to a low point to where i had no choice but to work on myself to build myself back up and so in doing that i reached a new level of security in myself because i'm like i'm not gonna ever feel that low again i'm never gonna let somebody take me that low again and so i realized that i have to really have my own back and so having your own back it's like okay if it happens i know my worth and i can just walk away and leave it's not a big deal i mean i'm not saying that oh i'm tough as hell and, and it's not gonna hurt i'm not gonna cry or i'm not gonna be sad about it but i'm gonna be crying and sad about it while i'm packing my shit and saying deuces you know <laughs> i'm gonna go cry and heal on my own you know i'm not healed to them and while I want to take a, a beat here, because while I'm saying, yes, leave, I want to get really real here. 
and say that sometimes, sometimes, people will stay through infidelity and you can't make it work. I've never been <laughs> through that. I'm talking about like in a, in a decent or healthy relationship. So, I don't believe that once a cheater, always a cheater. And I don't believe, and I do believe there's a difference between someone cheating and someone being a cheater. <laughs> that ing and er is the difference on the end of that. Someone that you know, no cheated. Someone ed and ed and and er. Yeah, I get what I'm saying. But someone that just cheated. I look at that is okay that's something that's out of their character okay so maybe it's worth looking into okay what caused this is there something within the marriage relationship that caused this and seeing if maybe there was a lack of communication and meeting seeing if it can work out like what happened sometimes that can happen sometimes but someone that has a personality trait of just being a cheater, meaning they don't give a damn, everything was fine, they just did it anyway, they didn't communicate with you, or they did it till you everything was fine, and they just did what they wanted to, or they keep on doing it, they've been doing it years, don't care, you know, that's different. That is a cheater that's just in, embedded in them for some reason, and that's something they had to work out on their own. It was no reason of the relationship itself. It's just them. That's different. I don't think you can work on that. My exes were cheat hers. They didn't just cheat it. They were cheat hers. So <laughs> that's different. I just wanted to touch on that because it's some sometimes you can work to that. Sometimes women have been the cheaters and the relationship ended up working out. Sometimes men have. So that's very, very different. And it's and I do believe that. A relationship can come back from that. That is another whole different type of podcast. And that's something that's a little bit out of my expertise. Only because I never went through and worked on it. But I believe that it can happen. And that it can be worked on. If it was just something that was like a one-time thing. Or something that slipped up. Or something that was within that relationship and marriage. That happened that wasn't discussed properly. Or something like that. You know. That's a little different. Some things can be worked on. But, like I said, that's a whole nother thing. Getting back into the subject. Realizing your worth. So, yeah. Last thing I want to say on that is, if someone cheats on you, all that means is that that shows you who they are. If someone was like, like really hurt you or really did it to where they didn't care. I'm not talking about what I said previously where it was just like a one-time thing. I'm talking about they just flat out don't care did it a lot of times kept going with it whatever it was that means that you get to decide that you know okay I know my worth I'm going to leave because that's a you thing and it can't be worked out so that's how I am able to feel safe and secure I have trust in me and in my partner I think I have a little bit more trust in me than I do my partner because because why I mean because it just feels more secure because I know me you know I can't control anyone else but me that's what it is knowing that I can control me I can't control them I can just all I can do is trust them and trust that I you know that they're going to do right by me but I also have to make sure that I'm going to do right by me meaning that I have my own back and I know what I'm going to do in the event that it happens. So I'm not worried about it happening because I know what I'm going to do in the event if it does. You feel me? So it's like there's no need to, for me to sit here and worry about it if I know that if and when it does, I already know my game plan of what I'm going to do. So there's no need to worry about it. Number five. So number five is... Understanding what your insecurities are. Because the thing is, you have to understand which is just which is your which is your insecurity and which is actually a threat to the relationship. Meaning that sometimes what we're feeling can really just be our own insecurities coming to light. 
and not really what they're doing. And so, in this sense, I would say it's best to communicate with your partner. If you're in a healthy space, in a healthy relationship, just open up to them and say, hey, I'm feeling insecure about this, or hey, this made me feel this way. And not go in accusing them or going off on them. It's basically being vulnerable. I found that help because even in my healthy relationship in my marriage now, there have been a few times where I felt insecure about some things. And well, all I did was basically raise the concern to him. Because sometimes, you know, it's okay to need a little reassurance. It's okay to have some want, need someone to, you know, it's okay to have someone that needs to just be there for you. Someone that, needs to, that you need consoling to reach out to them and say, hey, I need consoling. I need a little reassurance right now. I need a little attention right now. I'm feeling this way. And so that always helped me. And coming from my past, it, was, it wasn't the easiest for me to be vulnerable and to be open without either breaking down crying or going off and getting upset, doing the fight or flight mode. It, it wasn't easy at first because I didn't know how to do that. And so I slowly began to learn and, it, and I slowly realized it was safe to do so because of how he received it and how he understood it and how he was able to talk to me about it and talk me through it and made me feel better. So... That's how you know if you're in a healthy relationship and healthy space. If you're able to really sit down and say, hey, I'm feeling this way about this. Not say, you did this to me. How dare you? I seen you talking to so-and-so and you doing all of this and that. And what is that about? And you want to, you know, that is not going to come across to anyone. Would you want to talk to somebody coming off at you, pointing fingers and going off on you and accusing you of things that you know that you didn't do or didn't even have the intention of doing? No. And so... What you have to do in that situation is get really, really, first get calm yourself, self-soothe. That can be part of number six. This is five and six. Learning to self-soothe during those times when you're feeling elevated in your emotions and you're feeling like nervous. You're getting that nervous pit in your stomach and you're just feeling all these feelings. Self-soothe first. Calm yourself down. And then that's when you can have a real conversation with your partner. And just tell them, I'm feeling insecure about this. You know, I felt a way about this. I'm feeling these feelings right now. I just need a little reassurance right now. Or I'm feeling a little insecure even. Say, so I'm just, I'm, I just feel a little insecure about this. And I'm just afraid of this. You know, be for real. Use words like, I'm afraid. Or I'm scared. Or I have insecurities about this. I'm insecure about this. I'm feeling a way about this. It just made me feel a way. Because if that person cares about you. And if they love you. They are going to honor how you feel, hear how you feel, and listen to you. And they don't want to make you feel that way. That's not their intention. They may have not realized that their intentions caused you to feel a certain way. And so that's how you're able to come to them that way and say how you're feeling. And so when you're able to have conversations like this and actually communicate, that can be number seven. All of these, are, <laughs> all three go together. That can be number seven is communicate. If you know how to put, if you put all those things together and you're communicating your fears, you're being vulnerable and you're going to them about it, that can ease a lot of the anxiety you have over them cheating on you as well. That can ease a lot of, of the fears you may have as well. Because trust me, someone that's cheating on you and don't care about you are not going to sit there and listen to you talk about your fears they're not going to sit there and listen to you talk about what you feel insecure about they're not going to sit there and talk to you about any of that either they're cheating or either they because they feel and that's why they feel uncomfortable about that conversation because they actually are doing the things that you feel insecure about or either they just don't care about you or either they have an issue with talking about emotions and then maybe their emotion unavailable themselves or maybe they just don't have the emotional intelligence to have real conversations like that so that's something to consider as well that you that may need to be worked on and that's separate from this but see that was five six and seven all together <laughs> let me see so i guess what i want to just close this out with because that's pretty much the whole list yeah i just put them all together because they were all separated but a lot of it went together that's why i said i use it as a guide i just want to close with this y'all you don't have to have anxiety over someone cheating on you. You don't. 
that's something that you don't have to live with or tolerate or, you know, have in your life. You don't have to. And where I'm saying you don't have to is because that if you find yourself having this anxiety right now, it's either because they've actually done things to hurt you before or they cheated before or you have a lot of um, or your intuition or your gut is telling you that they have done something or you found little things or caught them up in little lies and you just don't feel safe there. That's an issue. You don't have to feel this way. You can either decide that, okay, you're not doing anything to help me to get past this feeling and I still don't trust you. So if I can't trust you, I can't be with you. I have to go. Or either it's something within you, your own insecurities, and you have to work on that. Work on your, your self-worth. Overall, for me, just building my self-worth up. Building my self-esteem up is what helped me to move securely in and out of any relationship. Meaning that I can securely attach and I can detach in the event that I realize that you don't care for me like I thought you did anymore. Or you don't love me anymore. I don't feel the love anymore. I can't trust you anymore. If I'm feeling that way, then it's like you are losing your value to me. You're no longer valuable to me. You're no longer someone that I want to be with. And that's when I have to remove myself. And so when you have the ability to do that and be confident in your choice in doing that, that erases the fear of being cheated on. Because y'all, like I said in the beginning, ignore my dogs. What I was saying. Like I was saying in the beginning, you know, I was cheated on like a lot a lot and I'm recognizing that it was because of the type of men I dated it was because of the type of relationships I was in and it was because of who I was as a person and so I separated that part of my life and who I was then the guys I dated then I separated that from my present life and with me separating that for my present life it allowed me to have a better sense of security because I know that this is different it's not the same I'm not the same I'm not dating the same people I'm dating different guys so it's like I'm now here with this new trust in myself meaning that I trust that I'm going to pick a good partner I'm trust that I'm going to abide by my standards I trust my ability to recover if I'm ever cheated on I trust my ability to walk away when um, someone is not recognizing my worth anymore. I trust myself to, to always have my own back. And I just really have this deep trust in myself to know when something is no longer right for me and that it's time for me to go. And I'm not questioning that. I think back then, I didn't have any of those things. And so, of course, my dating life is going to be different. Of course, I was going to date different people because I was different. And so now that I'm new and I have this new self-trust and all of these things in me, I don't have those fears anymore. You know? It's like that erased the fear of being cheated on. Yeah. And so it's really a you job. Only you can help ease those fears. Only you can build a security in yourself. I think sometimes we put so much dependence and trust in who we're dating. We put so much on them and expect them, expect so much from them and expect them to do everything in a relationship that we forget that we have to have ourselves too. Like, when you get in a relationship, it's not just the absence of you and now all of a sudden you got someone to take all your troubles away. Someone to just ease all your fears, all your insecurities. Someone to just do all the work for you. Someone to just love you enough that it covers the love that you should have for yourself. That's not why we get into relationships. And if you're moving into relationships with that type of attitude, you're always going to find yourself getting heartbroken, basically. Because you're putting everything and relying so heavily on them and not doing relying on yourself at all. And so when you get to a place to where you can rely on yourself and you're confident in yourself and you're just having a partner to add to your life, that helps a lot. 
And so, one more thing, actually, I forgot that I want to add. Self-love also helps. Like, I know it sounds so cliche, but what I mean by this is that self-love helps in the sense that you are not forgetting about you even while you're in a relationship. Self-love is basically you catering to you as well and you catering to your life even within a relationship. And when you have that component to where you actually have you and you're actually taking care of you still and not just relying heavily on your partner, you still have self-love, that means you are not getting all of your self-love from them, if that makes sense. It means that you're not so afraid of them leaving or so afraid of them cheating on you or so afraid of being abandoned because you still have you. So that means you're not essentially being abandoned and you realize, okay, if they hurt me, do something bad to me, that's not them abandoning me. That That's me realizing I have to set myself free from that. And once you realize that it's not that, it's not that you've been abandoned. It's not that you're being, you know, it's not that you're being abandoned. Once you realize that, you'll not be so afraid of that. And I feel like self-love is what helped me with that. It's what helped me to, to not have that fear. Because it's like, I always got me in my life at the end of the day. And life goes on. I don't have that scar scarcity mindset anymore. Thinking that that's the end of love for me forever. That there's not going to be ever anybody else. That it means that, oh, I was worthless for them to cheat on me. I look at it the opposite and like, okay, they're worthless to me. They have no value to me. I still have my self-love. I still have me. I still have my life. I got a lot of good things going for myself. I'm going to keep going. So it's not like someone is taking me with them. If I have to leave because they cheated on me, you know? And so once you build that up and you get your mind set on that, you're not going to be so worried in that relationship about that happening. That's as clear as I can put it because there's no other way around it. Because you first have to realize that they're if they're going to do it, they're going to do it. You know, you don't have the power to stop it. Who are you? You know, <laughs> you don't have the power to not stop them from doing that. And so once you wrap your head around that and they wrap your head around the part of, you know, I'll just leave. It'll just be over. Or it'll just be all right. It's not the end of the world. Then you won't have that fear. That's the last thing on my mind, be honest. Because it's like, it's the last thing. And if you're anxious, one more thing I want to add about for the anxious people. If you just feel that you are an anxious attacher, you still have the fear of abandonment, you're just afraid, what can help is to self-soothe yourself. And what can also help is to not only just self suit yourself through it, is to also give your partner a chance to show you who they are and to just love you and to be there and good for you. Give them a chance. If you've seen that they have not done anything to hurt you and they've always communicated with you, they've always tried their best with you, they're, they're still there. Just give them a chance to show you the good stuff. Focus in on more of the good things that they're doing and that you have with them. And relax and know that, you know, you got you still. And what can really help with that is just, think, don't think about what they could be doing. Don't let your imagination run around. Don't think about what could possibly go wrong. Think about the things that can go right. Because... The things that could go wrong could never happen. And so, how I like to say it is, don't focus on that until it happens. You know, what is the point of trying to move ahead and focus on it? Because I guess it's like you're trying to have a sense of control over the situation. And so you're trying to prevent it from happening so that you don't have to feel that way. But think about how it's making you feel right now just worrying about it. And, you know, hounding them about it. There's no, it's not peaceful for you or for them. And so the best you can do is just relax, self-soothe instead of dumping it all on them. Self-soothe, come back into you. Think about the good they're doing. Think about 
all the good things about them. Think about how they've been there for you. Think about how the relationship has grown. Think about all the good stuff. Focus in on the good stuff. And let that soothe you. And if it happens, if, you know, deal with it then. That's as clear as I can put that as well. Like, quit trying to deal with it before it happens, thinking you're going to prevent it because all you're doing is possibly pushing a good person away. And so all you have to do is just relax. Relax into it. It ain't happened yet. It's not happening. Quit creating it. And when it does happen, then it's when you'll deal with it. Then you'll figure out how to deal with it. If in the event it does. So, that's all I got for this podcast episode. I feel like I don't be explaining it enough, but that could be me. Maybe because I'm talking. Because every time I do these podcasts, y'all always tell me how well you loved it and how well it helped you. And I'm like, oh, I'm so glad to hear that. I guess it's coming out of my mouth. I don't realize that I'm saying a lot of good things. Sometimes I go back and play myself back because I, you know, get pieces out to put on my um, Instagram, my podcast. I have a podcast Instagram, Instagram for um, specifically my podcast. So I go back and watch bits to screen record and put up on there and i'm like oh that was pretty good what i said <laughs> so i'm glad it helps y'all because i almost didn't want to do this podcast today because i'm tired it's sunday i gotta work tomorrow Ugh. but i did it <laughs> i'm trying to push through <laughs> but anyway that's all I got y'all for real. It's always you can check out my patreon.com slash I've been that girl. That's where all the bonus content is. That's where any bonus episodes would be. There are a lot of episodes there already. There's like hundreds. So I do try to post if I have a bonus content, I'll post it at least once a week. At least once a week. Sometimes I may skip a week if I don't have anything. But majority of the time it's once a week. But yeah, in any books below, you can check them out below. Any, um, my Toxic S Chronicles, John. Check out my series, Toxic. Um, that's on this, on my YouTube channel as well. And I got three books out, y'all. Three. Check them out. One right behind me. Toxic S Chronicles, John. Five stars on Amazon, by the way. Well, it's maybe 4.8 or 9. But you know what I'm saying. Anyway. I'm rambling. That's all I got for this podcast episode, girlfriends. Until the next one, peace out.